Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So you're here in Washington, D.C., in the United States, uh, to attend the 2016 Nuclear Summit. Uh, what outcomes can Nigerians expect for this summit for them? Uh, and why, as the Minister of Defense, uh, were you asked to participate? Uh, actually, uh, I came for bilateral mm -hmm. uh, between U.S. and Nigeria, and that is where we started. It was later that uh, I was also invited to be at the nuclear summit. Okay. Nigeria is trying to gain the nuclear summit in the way that we are a developing nation. And uh, we learn a lot from America that uh, our president is here also to converge with other friendly nations, mm -hmm. about 50 of them, to see how to bring nuclear security to nations, especially uh, avoiding the use of it by these terrorists and insurgents. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria has a long way, for a long, uh, as long as Nigeria need to acquire nuclear technology, there is a need for us to be in that organization. Recently there have been some reports uh, that you said that there were two local governments that were still under the control of Boko Haram. Uh, and there have been reports that it was contradicting what President Buhari had said. So, I was wondering if you'd be able to kind of clarify the record in terms of what the situation is with Boko Haram today. Uh, the interview, if you can remember, it was done in Hausa, mm -hmm. by B.O. Okay. Hausa. There was never a time I said two local governments were okay. controlled by Boko Haram. I said, and I repeat, remnants mm -hmm. are found in two local governments, but mm -hmm. all over the nose is, is cleared of uh, this it's just like a mop up mm -hmm. and when you do mop up mm -hmm. definitely that the program is finished as well as some remnants counts that are there that the our forces are clearing mm -hmm. that is what i said mm -hmm. so you feel like it was it was misconstrued maybe in terms um, of translation and, and of course it was okay. misconstrued in the translation okay and it has been issued mm -hmm. it has been clarified mm -hmm. and i believe nigerians also knows about that. Okay. There's also been some conversations about um, Nigeria's membership with the Islamic Coalition. Uh, and President Buhari, during an interview, he said um, that they wanted to work with anybody who was committed to fighting uh, terrorism or Islamic terrorism. Um, but there's still some concerns amongst some Nigerians. And I was wondering if you would ever ask Nigerian soldiers who happen to be con Christian uh, and force them to participate in the Islamic you Coalition. See Terrorist has no religion. Mm -hmm. Somebody who kill a Christian in a mosque, I mean a Muslim in a mosque, a Christian in a church, cannot say he's a Muslim. So it's like we are, the country wants to unite with anybody that is ready to fight terrorism in the world. Mm -hmm. This is a global phenomenon, mm -hmm. and it doesn't belong to Muslims or Christians mm -hmm. aside. The one in Netherlands, was it done in a Muslim country, or mm -hmm. was it done by East? Uh, serious issue mm -hmm. that the whole world need to come together mm -hmm. and fight against. Mm -hmm. So the issue of uh, my president going from Islamic to other countries is not an issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is who are those ready mm -hmm. to fight terrorists? Mm -hmm. Whether Muslim, Christian, or wherever side they come from, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But would, would a Christian soldier who is part of the Nigerian military, would they be asked to fight uh, within this kind of broader coalition of, of Islamic states? You see, that coalition is not for Muslims alone. Mm -hmm. Anybody that is willing to fight terrorists is in, on board. Mm -hmm. I've just uh, attended one in uh, Egypt mm -hmm. where all the Sahel mm -hmm. countries come together to fight terrorism. Mm -hmm. in the, uh, there are many known uh, Muslim countries there mm -hmm. that participated. So the coalition of um, Muslim countries coming together is another s portion mm -hmm. of the grand strategy to punish terrorism in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And so, so you're saying that it's not simply uh, a, a question of religion uh, and that the Islamic coalition it sh maybe shouldn't be considered 
simply simply about Islam that it's you more see, inclusive? Uh, ideally, like I told you, the whole issue of terrorism doesn't have bound. Mm -hmm. Where it's, it doesn't stop within the Muslim countries, or it doesn't uh, stop at uh, only being Muslim being killed, mm -hmm. but Christian and Muslims are being affected by this international terrorism uh, effect. So the coalition has uh, nothing to do with uh, religion, honestly. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. There have been ongoing news reports uh, about Niger uh, about violence um, from the Nigerian military targeting the Shiite community, specifically in Zaria. Uh, Amnesty International said that at least 300 Shiites were massacred uh, over the course of several days by the military. Um, Nigerians have been wondering who authorized uh, the overwhelming use of force against civilians. Wh who ordered the killings of these, these uh, you Shiites? See this is something that is under the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I comment on that, I'm going beyond the bound. Let the uh, inquiry mm -hmm. finish. They will also out that. Mm -hmm. It's something that you saw on TV, a whole chip of Anistab mm -hmm. was going on a street and he's blocked. Mm -hmm. So the chip of Anistab is a symbol of authority mm -hmm. of the armed forces of Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if they can be stopped, that means uh, the whole authority is being degraded. So for us uh, to say who authorized or who did not authorize, it doesn't come up, but let the uh, investigation be finished. Then we know that. Well, so it, it, it is very important for people to know who had the order to use force against civilians. Now, w again, it was military and civilians, uh, and that's something that's really concerning. And, and certainly it's not only exclusively the responsibility of that inquiry to do that, you would be able to then say, uh, it was the chief of staff, it was myself who gave the order, it was actually nobody who gave the order, it was simply an emotional response. No, so no, so no. What, who is responsible for no. authorizing that uh, force? You know, if you have followed the trend of that issue, mm -hmm. there was an instigation from the other side. Mm -hmm. They have no intention to use any force or to go through, but they were stopped. So they first through, removed the barricade, the one they started uh, attacking them. Mm -hmm. And in response, what we call uh, uh, use of minimum force, mm -hmm. they also uh, retaliated. Mm -hmm. Why is it okay for us to say who was the main aggressor in this situation, but not who authorized the use of force? You are moving somebody stop you mm -hmm. and he said you cannot pass mm -hmm. will you call that an aggressor if i'm asking you if i may ask you it can be so let's say the military was instigated let's say that there was a real threat of violence against the chief of staff who was it that said we're going to use violent force against against the civilians let's wait for the investigation panel they'll find out that so you, are you saying you're not sure who that is? No, I didn't say so. I said allow the investigation to be found out because if I do so, I will have infringed mm -hmm. on the uh, investigation mm -hmm. panel's authority. Mm -hmm. So you're, you, you're saying that you are comfortable saying that the, the Shiite protesters instigated force, but you're not willing to say who authorized the use of that you force? You see, uh, like I said, there is an authority in a place, a place is being for pre-flow of traffic, mm -hmm. and somebody come and block it. So I'm not looking for any instigator. I didn't say that whether instigative, or, but was it, is it right? That's a question I'll ask. For st somebody to be stopped and said a pre-flow, like a parallel road or a city road being blocked mm -hmm. and said nobody will pass. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Um, now, that particular violent incident, it went on for several days. Um, so it went on, it was Saturday, Sunday, and then into Monday. Uh, there, were it, there were images of shrines and important places of worship being torn down. And it looked like a, a multi-day kind of pogrom, is what some people have said. Um, and so... It was just overnight. It was just overnight. overnight. So the, was there no violence mm. or there was there no shooting from the Nigerian military, let's say, on Monday or Sunday? 
you know, like I said, these are the type of things mm -hmm. that uh, I shouldn't uh, go in deep into. Right. It, it was just overnight they finished. Uh, in the morning, the whole thing was uh, cleared. And uh, the, the mm -hmm. uh, patriarchs or those that did the edition were caught. Mm -hmm. I see. And we're confident, we're confident that it didn't ex extend beyond that Saturday? It didn't. Okay. Um, as you know, a, a board of inquiry was formed to investigate uh, the abuse and interference by the military in elections. Uh, one outcome was that Captain Sigur Kohli, uh, the famous whistleblower of the Akiti Gate scandal, received a commendation by the board of inquiry uh, and was reinstated into the military. Uh, what has happened with Kohli's superior, Brigadier General Momo? Let me tell you, maybe you may not be aware. Mm -hmm. That brigade was my brigade before I left. I handed over to somebody okay. in that brigade. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was pre-planned. Mm -hmm. The officer that took over from me from that brigade, and I conducted a, an election in Ondo State mm -hmm. that attracted international community was married to the military. Mm -hmm. That at the initial step, Mm -hmm. That thing was like a setup. Mm -hmm. You remove somebody that was there mm -hmm. who was just about two months and bring somebody from elsewhere mm -hmm. that you know that something went wrong. Mm -hmm. So Sagiri is my intelligence officer and mm -hmm. I know and we did mm -hmm. on those state election mm -hmm. before the AKT. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was uh, like a setup or I mean the planet. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you say set up, you're, you're talking about the Akiti elections being uh, Of course, uh, they, I just they want to know what you mean by it set up in the sense that they intended to do something that is not uh, professionally uh, right. Mm -hmm. Because uh, never a time because of election, you remove a commander in the mm -hmm. armed forces and bring somebody and say mm -hmm. he I should see. conduct it. I see. Yes. So, so what's the status of Brigadier General Ali Momo? Last we heard, he was in Mina, uh, I think in charge of Tredoc. Um, and we've already commended the person who said he did these things. Why is he still in power? He was redeployed or the person. Yeah, Amumu is, was redeployed to training and doctrine command. Mm. Why is he still there in Mina? Uh, well, uh, go and check well. I think the officer has been recommended for voluntary retirement. He was recommended for voluntary retirement? Yes. You, you can confirm that. No, I not. I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that yeah. was if that was uh, if that was publicized yet. So, well, so it was when, recommended. So when will he voluntarily resign? As soon as possible. Okay. In fact, if you may, as I'm talking to you, maybe he has already applied for it. Okay. Uh, do you anticipate? There was a board, you know. Yeah, yeah, a exactly. board, and they recommended. Mm -hmm. he, he has been recommended for retirement, in short. Okay. Yes, the board recommended for him to be retired. Okay. Yes. Um, and to your, the best of your knowledge, has he actually been retired yet? Yeah, I think so by now. He has been retired? Yes. Okay. Um, do you think that that's enough against somebody who is being asked to voluntarily retire uh, for what you uh, said was a setup of this election? Should there be criminal charges against him? Um, like I said, there is a board and the board recommended. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a situation like this, you have to look at mm -hmm. the pros and cons. Professionally, mm -hmm. as a military man, mm -hmm. you have to look code and edicts mm -hmm. of what you are expecting. We have all this uh, court and, I mean, uh, election mm -hmm. code and ethics that mm -hmm. what you should do as a military man. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, uh, the board has done their decision and uh, we have implemented. So do you remember if the board recommended uh, legal charges against him? I do remember the report said some people should have it. Was he one of those individuals? How? Uh, so, so that maybe that additional criminal charges should be brought against certain individuals. Do you remember if criminal charges was recommended to be lodged no, against you Mr. See, Momo? Those ones has to do with the election. If the election, mm -hmm. uh, INEC find him mm -hmm. wanting in that direction, they can Charge, he can be charged for election, but uh, militarily, the ethics that mm -hmm. I mean, the board that went through so that he didn't do his uh, well uh, professionally, and uh, mm -hmm. they recommended that for as punishment for him. I see. Um, the security situation in Biafra has been of growing concern, not just to Nigerians but to international observers. 
Um, do you think that the continued detention of Namdi Kanu is helping or harming that situation in Biafra? A decision has been taken and uh, he's been in court, so mm -hmm. I cannot determine that for now. From a, from a security standpoint though, is it exacerbating that security situation or is it actually helping to uh, make sure that it doesn't grow out of control? You can see the whole thing is being stabilized uh, for some time now. Okay. So I think it has uh, assisted in stabilizing the situation. I see. Do you think his release would make it harder in terms of that security situation? Mm, it depends on what the court mm -hmm. determines. Mm -hmm. My last question. Uh, Sahar Reporters has released several videos of military cadets being abused or struck by their superior officers. Um, many Nigerians have cringed at these images, and public opinion seems that uh, that training or those kinds of training pa practices are unethical. Do you think having soldiers trained in that manner affects their treatment towards civilians? You see, the issue is uh, as much as possible we are trying to retrain mm -hmm. uh, forces, train and retrain. Not that. I do, I've uh, been saying Nigerian soldier is one of the best in the world, but give him leadership. Mm -hmm. We are trying as much as possible to give leadership mm -hmm. by example. Mm -hmm. Like I rightly said, since the assumption of this uh, administration, mm -hmm. General Muhammad Buhari has given us the correct leadership mm -hmm. and he has made sure that almost all the requirements and uh, welfare needs mm -hmm. of our armed forces are being done, but mm -hmm. they cannot be done in a day. Mm -hmm. Something that was done in 16 years, mm -hmm. we can just do it mm -hmm. for a moment. So we are training and retraining and trying to provide all the necessary needs that our armed forces mm -hmm. wanted, and we are in the process of doing that. Do you think that that kind of violence being used in training creates uh, a likelihood that those soldiers may use violence against civilians or be reckless in terms of harm? No, 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 no. That is why we are always trying to see that the civil military relationship mm -hmm. is always enhanced. Mm -hmm. We have created civil military departments in all the armed forces wing, even mm -hmm. at divisional level. We are trying to do it up to maybe battalion level so that the relationship between the military and the civilians will be cordial. Additionally, this is uh, what we call uh, surrendering the military to the civilian mm -hmm. authority. Mm -hmm. That is our cardinal principle as mm -hmm. of now. Okay. All right. Mr. Don Adley, thank you so much for your time. Thank you we very much. It. Thank you.